Welcome to Fashion Through Time. In this video, we will be taking an in-depth look at wedding fashion of the ages from 1800s to 1970s. We will look at the history and design for their era. We will also take a look at how wedding cakes have changed over the years. For the virtual walk around, check out the link in the description below. Let's begin. eighteen seventy. This Victorian wedding gown is the earliest in Flambard's collection. This gown may be familiar to some who have visited before, as it was the bride in the fitting room above Miss Fillingham's millinery emporium in Flambard's village. The gown is fashioned in superfine wool and slipper satin. eighteen seventy eight this sage green silk gown was worn by miss mary ann scott on the occasion of her marriage to mr william baker in the mid eighteen seventies the bride's family was in half mourning so the more traditional white gown introduced into fashion by her majesty queen victoria some forty years earlier would not have even been considered within a full year family bereavement. Respect had to be reflected in a quiet wedding. This lovely dress would have graced such an occasion. The couple lived in their married life in Herne Hill, South East London. 1897 this ivory satin gown was worn by Miss Mary Foster on her wedding day in 1897 and again later when she was presented at court as a married woman. For this latter occasion, the high lace collar and long undersleeves were removed. A full court train was added from the shoulders and elbow gloves and court feathers were worn. 1912. There's no provenance for this delightful chiffon over silk gown, but it may be surmised that the beautiful hand embroidery that adorns the bodice, skirt and sleeves were done by the bride herself, for surely it was a labour of love. The gown has an unusual double train, and the veil, which is also double, is of fine damp or lace. 1923. This gown of pure silk guns and satin, a reminiscent of Pride and Prejudice, was worn by a London bride in 1923. 1929. This lace dress, so typical of its time, was worn by Miss Hilda May Perry on the 7th of February 1929 when she married Mr George Raffle at the Unitarian Chapel in Ilminster. The rear view of the wedding dress is almost more important than the front as guests had time to concentrate their gaze upon the ceremony. This dress is enhanced at the back by a gracious dip to the hemline and a double tab trim to the neck. The hat of the photograph hasn't survived. The one you see here is a close copy. The bride was an aunt of Mrs. Bernard Lawrence Crookan. Nineteen forty one. Miss Winifred Townley. The fortunate bride who wore this elegant wedding gown was able to fly in the face of wartime austerity when she was given a long length of pre-war figured satin as a wedding present. Being a professional dressmaker, she designed the wedding dress of her dreams and with a little help from her mother, who covered all 49 buttons by hand, she was well qualified to fashion the gorgeous fabric into this very special gown. 
1944. One of the remnants of parachute silk which came with the dress clearly bears the official US identification number, which leads us on to this unique story of this gown. This is a US Army parachute silk dress. During World War II, and with an allocation of only 27 clothing coupons per year, many a young woman gave up her dream of a romantic white wedding and instead wore a day dress of just seven coupons or a costume which was a jacket and skirt which could be worn long after the wedding day. But here we have a dream come true. This ingenious dress was made entirely of a US Army parachute even the rigging cord has been utilised for the ruching, the bodice and the headdress. The skirt, which measures 492 centimetres or 16.2 inches around the hem, is exactly one half of the whole parachute. It is a perfect semicircle and the seams of reinforced ribs are all original and undisturbed. All that was done to fashion the skirt was to gather it at the waistline and turn up the hem. Of course, parachutes are formed by curvaceous panels. They just won't lie flat, a fact which accounts for the unusual fall of the folds of the full skirt. There is indelible evidence of the dress having been worn by three different brides, not to be wondered at in wartime as there were three distinctly different hemlines to be discerned upon a close inspection. The first bride probably had the normal four-inch hem. The next, who must have been very short, turned it up to a further ten inches. It would have been a rather bulky hem, as no fabric was trimmed off, probably because it was only borrowed. The third bride apparently unpicked both hems and needed to sew on a false hem to suit her height. It is probable that the first girl to wear this dress was a GI bride, or the bride of an American serviceman of any rank, of whom there were over 80,000 in total. Nineteen forty-six. This gown was worn by Miss Dorothy Weber of Islington on her marriage in 1946 to Mr. Reginald Storey of Stoke-on-Trent. The gown has caused some conjecture. Does it date from 1946 or almost a decade earlier? Its classic style, though in its own way dateless, is made of cloquet, a fabric tremendously popular with pre-war brides. It is unlikely to have been available immediately post-war. The general style of the gown with its soft shoulder line is typical of the earlier date. Reading the dress, it has certainly been very carefully washed at some stage and yet shows signs of the hem of having been worn since. 1946, the war was over but clothes rationing was not. The wartime practice of shared or borrowed wedding finery continued well into peacetime. The bride was the mother of Miss Janet Ball and grandmother of Mr. Peter Ball, both of whom live in Penzance. Nineteen seventy-one, the serenely beautiful medieval style gown was worn by a local bride. 1971. 1974. This short wedding dress, showy though it is, yet retains the rudimentals of the traditional white wedding. It was worn at the time when many young people were turning away from tradition, traditional values, and were out to shop. Some chose to marry wearing jeans and tatters or flower power garb. Some chose to reject the wedding ceremony altogether. That concludes our wedding attire. Let's look now at some of the decorative cakes over the decades.
Wedding cake styles changed over the centuries, much like the wedding attire. Here, flambards display a variety of decorative cakes, ranging from a single cake to seven tiers. Flowers have always been a staple to a cake design, but as time goes on, cakes take on new roles with toppers or charms of good luck. The pipework began more elaborate with exquisite detail and colour. I personally recognise some of these cakes from family weddings and photos. How about you? Comment below if you had a style of cake like these or recognise the designs yourself. That concludes our journey of fashion through time. Remember, the links to the walk around are in the description, along with the link to visit Flambards for yourself. Next time, we'll be taking a look at the Concorde, a pioneering step in aviation. Remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. Thank you for watching. Until next time.